Hi guys, welcome back to another session here at WPPI 2015. We're here in the Lumix Lounge. I'm on stage here with my good friend, Mr. Joseph Lenaski. What's up, Joseph? Good to see you, my man. All right, you have a brand new website, first of all. Before we dive into all this lighting stuff, we'll talk about that a little bit. It's okay. called, I wrote it down here so I can get it right. <laughs> good. Photos, photo apps expert. <laughs> you already got it right. Photo apps expert. <laughs> Photoapps.expert. Photoapps.expert. That's the one. There you go. Is now it? you got it. Photoapps.expert. Okay. <laughs> so you're one of the cool kids that had, you know, using those new top level domains. That's right. Hey, why not? Yeah, that why expert, not? right? Right. Very cool. So tell us about that site first. What is uh, it? So that is the that is the progression of what used to be Aperture Expert. Since Aperture is no longer with us. What is it? What was that? Site? I have no idea. It's a no program idea. called Aperture. Yeah, there was. Yeah. There was one day. Yeah, I heard it about it. It was a beautiful that. thing. <laughs> it is no longer. It is no longer. We, it's it's now six feet under, or at least on its way down. So, yeah, so the site was, uh, was redesigned, relaunched uh, just about a week ago, actually. It was right before the show. PhotoApps.expert. The whole idea here is it's all about photo apps. So yeah. whether it's an app for your iPhone, for Android, Mac, or Windows, it's Photoshop. all software. It's all about photography. Not just learning it. It's, you know, it's a training resource, of course, but there's a lot of those out there, so I'm not trying to compete with any of them. Yeah. This is... Uh, this is individual tips and training that are just very bite-sized pieces, learning how a particular feature works or how this can fit into your workflow. Yep. There will be presets and training that are for sale, that sort of thing. Yeah. There's a huge forum on there that's always been really popular for Aperture, so that forum has already been expanded to include basically every app that I could come up with that was worth talking about. Very cool. So those there's are like all a in there. A separate subject. Right, there, exactly. Okay. So actually now when you go to forums, there's a forum for just about everything. So you're talking so. about, which is a big leap for you because the Aperture expert site, right? Right. All Mac... Specific, aperture only, uh, right. Aperture only. Now you've sort of split out into all operating systems. Right. So, so clearly I can't do this all on my own. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could be the aperture expert. I can't be the Lightroom expert, the Photoshop expert, the, the phase one expert. I can't be all those, right? Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So I've got a lot of people now writing for the site. So we're going to have a lot of different opinions, a lot of different thought processes on there, which is really cool. And the, the main charter right now is helping people who are using Aperture to figure out what to transition to. Because yeah. this is not an easy answer. The it's refugees. Not the, the refugees, yeah, yeah. Where are they going to go? Yeah. There's no easy answer. I can't just say, oh, everybody should go to Lightroom or everybody should go to Capture One. There's there's no right answer. Right. So right. my the, job... The right answer is it depends. It, exactly. The answer is it depends. So my job is to educate people on what the options are, mm -hmm. compare and contrast, show what's missing, show what's there, show what wasn't there before, and just help people decide where to go. And Love that's it. what we're all about. All right, let's transition into the topic. Let's do it. We're going to talk about light. Lighting it is. You know, photography means recording light, right? Is that what it means? That's what it means. Dang, I've been you doing it wrong all these years. Light recorder, you know. But all that's changing, I'll, I'll try and remember that. It's all changing, though. So we're, now photographers are recording more than just light, audio, all that stuff, right? This is true. Um, but specifically, some of the nuances that pop up are continuous lighting versus strobe now. Right. You know, we're getting these awesome cameras out there, mirrorless cameras that have really good low light sensitivity, which Absolutely. opens up continuous lighting, where it was blocked for months before. When you're right. shooting film in 100 ISO or 200 ISO, shooting with continuous light was not an option, right? right. Now it's an option. Back yep. then it was only strobe, now it's not. Take me through what you think. We're like state of the union, sure. big versus small. Sure, well, let's get one one obvious one out of the way, and that's if you're going to do video, then you have to do constant lighting, yeah. right? That That's an obvious. So yeah. this conversation is really about still photography and when you would use strobes and when you would use constant light. Yep. And some, some areas are gray. You could use either. Some you really need one, and some you really need the other. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. Yeah. So, so what I've got here is a series of photos just to kind of go through a progression of where we have to be working with studio lights yep. to where we have to be working with constant lights and some gray areas in between. Yep. So when it comes to studio lights, you know, I've, I've got a big studio in Ashland. It's my place where I work, and I've got pro photos in there, and I love working with big lights. Big yeah. lights, those big modifiers. Big, big, those are pro photo or like the... Top right. of the line when you're talking about strobe, right? Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you're the output, the quantity of light that you get out of one of these things. I mean, quality is one thing. It's pro photo. The quality is mm, beautiful, but yeah. the quantity of light that you get out of a pro photo head versus a strobe versus an LED, yeah. it's algorithmic. I mean, it's you just know, a massive difference. I want to I I go through this, but I want to I want to dive into that a little bit. Sure. You know, as I I was at this uh, this mixer the other night in Silicon Valley, and somebody said, you know what? I want to double click on that. Let's. <laughs> So Joseph, oh my God! Let's, let's double click the on valley. That. the valley. <laughs> or the other one I heard. Let's put a pin in that. <laughs> so let's double click on that. When you say quality of light, sure. So when I think of light, I think of photons. You know, and how one photon is the same as the next photon. It's light. What changes to me, and I want you to correct me. What changes is the the modifiers that are on that light or the color temperature of the light, right? So 
when you say quality of light of say a pro photo head versus a I don't know a Paul C. Buff Einstein head. What's 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 the quality that you're talking okay. about? So there's two different things that come to mind there, and it's it, modifiers are aside because modifiers are separate. So just bare light, just starting from the the bare bulb, if you will. Mm -hmm. There's consistency, and that's consistency in color, temperature, mm -hmm. consistency in output, like the volume of output, how much you're getting out. Right. If you set your light to whatever you set it to, and you fire the flash, if it's off by a quarter of a stop or an eighth of a stop one way or the other every time you shoot, yeah. that ain't good. Yeah. And that's what happens in cheaper lights, which is why you'll spend the money on really good lights, so that when you push the button, every time it is exactly the same. It's the same color, it's the same output, the yeah. same amount of photons are coming out it's of that. Yeah, cell. it's consistency. Okay. So when you're doing a shoot like up here, yep. where you've got, you know, you're relying on capturing action here. People, yep. the dancers are jumping up in the air. You know, I've only got one chance every jump to get the right shot. Yep. And if they do the perfect move, but the light was off by an eighth of a stop, or the color temperature shifted, it's like, oh, you lose the shot. It's screwed up. Yep. And sure, yeah, you know, you can fix a lot in post, but I don't want it. I want it to be right in the beginning. Right. Yeah. So that's part of it. The other part of it is a, a bit more intangible quality of light. You take a series of lights and put them next to each other, and you just fire them off, and there's just something creamier, something nicer, something better. It's a it's a bit intangible and it's hard to understand. That's what I, mean. I hear the same thing from Leica when people when I was interviewing the Leica folks, they were talking about the Leica look. Right. But it's an intangible it's, you can see it, but it's it's hard to describe. Yeah. You know, and the same you're talking about the same kind of same intangible, kind of thing. ethereal quality yeah. from the light itself. Yeah. See, it makes a difference. I still don't understand. <laughs> Well, then I guess you got to get yourself a bunch of pro, pro photos yeah. or some other really high-end light yeah. and a bunch of cheaper lights and yeah. do some shoots side-by-side, side and, and yeah. you'll see it. You'll start to feel it. But that's not to say that photographers can't start with cheaper lights of course not. and then migrate up to pro photo. Of course not. Yeah, I don't want people to think, oh, you know, in order to be a real photographer, I no. need to go get pro photo lights. That's not the case, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Now, being a real photographer is all up here. Yeah. Right? It's all in what you see, what you create. Mm -hmm. Having nicer tools makes your job easier makes your job more enjoyable. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it allows you to, con to pr produce a more consistent result. Uh, but, you know, yeah. uh, not everybody gets to be there and it takes time to get there and that's just what it is. I, sure, I didn't start with Pro Photo. I know. No, yeah. Of course not. Yeah, the but. cool thing about photography is you can grow into this stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So as you start making more money and you can get the big studio and, you know, do all in higher assistance and all that, you can upgrade yeah. pieces as necessary. Different cameras, different lighting. You're you good, got it. Right. Right. Let's look exactly. at this. Let's look okay. At so more. yeah. So this photo. So this is a, a well. Let's call it a big light photo. This is pro photos. Mm -hmm. And so the way this is lit is I've got a six by six foot um, uh, diffusion panel, mm -hmm. and t and it, this is raised up in the air on a couple C stands, and two big pro photo heads, six hundred watt heads, two of them blasting through it. Yeah. So I've got just basically a wall of light, so that I can get nice, even illuminated light all around them. I don't have any hard shadows. It's just a little shadowing here, but no hard shadows. Yep. There's no hard shadows in this, yep. and that's what we want. This is a nice, clean image to advertise a, a show for this dance company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, bright colors on there. So now we need that clean quality of light. We need a huge amount of it, and the pro photos will allow me to do something that small strobes wouldn't do, which is giving me this immense amount of light so I can freeze motion in a studio with a light source that big. Yeah. Right? It would probably take, I don't know, 20 little heads to get that much light, but I can do it with two pro photos. Yeah. And then the back is also lit with two more pro photo heads blasting out the background to make it go pure white. Yep. Right. So that's two different steps there to make sure that you get that. So they're totally against the white background. Yep. They're frozen in midair. There's no motion blur. The colors are beautiful. Shadows are soft. That is a big light territory. And it's locked in. And you can, I would assume that when these, when these, uh, this dance trip was doing these moves, you had them do it like 20, 30, 40 times. Exactly. And each time you make the exposure, it's the same as the last. Precisely. Right? That's okay. the point. Yeah. Yeah. Many times the guy in the middle had to change his shirt, getting all sweaty because it's just too much. They're going again and again and again. Yeah. You know, they got to get the right move. And um, yeah. I can see you in there. Okay. Again. Again. <laughs> Fortunately, their their instructor, the dance company owner, I guess, was there telling them, you know. Do it again. Change this. And, yeah. You know, it's never, I don't say never, it's rarely that I didn't get the shot. It's more, okay, the move wasn't quite right. Lift your leg a little higher. Turn this way a little bit more. Yeah. It's hard. You get three people coordinating something like this. You're just going again and again Were you and again. Were tethered or was the, the, the owner looking at a display? As uh, yeah, I wasn't shooting tethered for this, um, but you certainly can now. That's, that's definitely an option. I, I just didn't, I chose not to for that one. Um, sometimes, 
it depends on what the client wants, also depends on their budget. Yeah. You know, there, there are times when you don't give them everything because the budget's too low. And this is one of those where it was a bit of a lower budget project. Yeah. Um, you know, I still want to knock it out of the park. I still want to give them a killer image. I'm yeah. not going to say, well, I'm only setting up two lights instead of four no, because you're only your paying this. On Who knows? I'm right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. But there are things that you can take out of the equation, like, and I'm not going to shoot tethered. You're going to have to look at the back of the camera, yeah. and that's just how it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that. And then the second image is the same, uh, same type of a setup. Uh, you know, again, blasting out the white background. I think it may have actually been the same physical setup, just changing it up a little bit. That's really nice. But again, again thank you. Again, just getting that beautiful brilliance of the light. Now, that, actually, let's go back to this one for a second. Uh, talking about constant light. Now, here, could I have lit this with constant lights? Sure, if yeah. I had enough of them, right? right. This, we're talking movie set quantity of light because I need to freeze motion. If you're shooting movies and that are not destined for stills, just yeah. movies, yeah. you're shooting at a 60th of a second. Right, and that's fine. I can't shoot that at a 60th of a second. Yeah. Right, they're going to be motion Unless you're blur. going for that kind of streaky blur. Thing. Well, right, yeah. but I just I need to freeze them. So right, right. I need enough light. So to get enough light to shoot that at 250th of a second with constant lights is a huge amount of lights. Yeah. That's not that's more lights than I've got, um, and it would be I don't know probably ten to twenty thousand dollars worth of LEDs to get that. Prohibitively expensive to do it that way. Prohibitively expensive. Yeah. So strobes, even though those strobes are not cheap, yeah. it's still the less expensive way to do it. Yeah. And that would be the same for this, although there's not as much motion in here, but there there still is. You know, they're they're holding their position, especially her in the middle, for a split second, just being able to get into that position and then it falls back down again. So trying to nail that spot. Yeah. So then here now we go into where this is shooting with smaller lights. So we're using little pocket strobes basically. Yeah. So shooting with the Lumix cameras, we're shooting with a little strobe. And the cool thing about these strobes is that you can control them from the camera. So we go back to here shooting with the big lights and it's I'm climbing up on a ladder to adjust mm -hmm. the pro photo head. Now, yeah. I don't have the really expensive ones. You can control them from an that's iPad. What say. They're or, like, well, you're going to oh, get the wireless ones, oh, right? That's cool, but I mean, that's, you, you know. you got to step up your game. Oh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But here, now we're shooting with smaller lights, but I can control these lights from the back of my GH4. Yeah. And this is the coolest thing, right? You've got the GH4 has the little pop-up light on here that will control it. This doesn't actually light the scene, but this will control the other lights. And then on the back of the LCD here, I can say, okay, take light bank A, bring it up, half a stop, light That's bank B, bring it down. I had no idea that that was That's in all there. built in. Wow, yeah. okay. So here in this situation, she's being backlit. It looks like the sun's coming through, but it isn't really. The When we were shooting in here, this is an old barn, and I saw the light coming through. The sun was out there somewhere, mm -hmm. and it was a great shot, but I couldn't get the sun and everything in the right place. Yeah. So I made my own sun. Right. Put a light out there on a light stand, Love shining it. in, yep. right? Gel I think I've the light. Seen you do that before. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. You always make your own sun. <laughs> exactly. I make my own light. Yeah. Uh, and but then I'm able to control it from the camera. So instead of having to run around, you know, a 20 minute walk around the back here, yeah. I can just control just it from right here. here. Yeah, very, very cool. Very cool. I had no idea. Now, the, the strobes that you're controlling through this, these are Panasonic strobes? Panasonic strobes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 580. Uh, yeah, 580 is the number on them, okay. on the bigger ones, yeah. Wonderful. Really cool. Great so you can do that. Okay. So then, let's get it, let's go to a shot where this could be either or. Mm -hmm. right? This could be constant light or it could be strobes. And now we're getting into that gray area of you could do this with either one. doesn't matter what you got. You got it. You can shoot it. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is shot with a strobe, but it's a single light beauty dish kind of kind of straight up and above and then a reflector at the bottom. Yeah. It's a, it it's almost a, like an illustration, like a pencil sketch, kind of really nice. That's a very, and this is almost straight out of the camera. The only thing that's been done to this is touched out some stray hairs. Yeah. But otherwise, it's straight out of camera. So it's black and white shot in camera with the GH4 put into black and white mode, dial in the black and white the way I want it, this kind of softish look. Really? It's all dialed in the camera. It's you all pre-processing. You that into the camera and right. shot it just like that. Well, exactly. it helps having a gorgeous model. Oh, yeah. well, you know, yes, that does help. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, amazing. Okay. Yeah. So that's. But are you shooting raw too? Always. Yeah. So I'm it's always creating, shooting. It's doing the, the black and white conversion processing to your specs to a JPEG, right. saving that next to the raw file, so you, you can go it. back and, and process it later if you want. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's this is a big thing that we talk about a lot of the idea of being able to shoot a look in camera, mm -hmm. and we, it's something we're calling pre-processing now. Right? We okay. all know what post-processing is. Well, now now let's call it pre-processing. Yeah. In the camera, you go and you dial in the look that you want, whether it's black and white or high contrast, uh, high saturation, crunchy look, yep. maybe add in some noise to get that grainy look, or yeah. you deliberately shoot at a really high ISO, yep. turn off noise reduction, all these different things that you can do to generate a look. You save that as your own custom look, yep. and then when you're out shooting, you dial up that look. Now, if you're out shooting say on your vacation or something, mm -hmm. then that's awesome. You get your look. And, you know, who wants to deal with all post-processing all this crap when you get home? I'm on vacation, man. Right. And that's, that's great. But I've been using this also for working with clients because I can do something like this in the studio with a client, mm -hmm. show them the look that they want 
in camera. If, they, if I tell you that I'm going to shoot a black and white portrait of you, mm -hmm. and I shoot and then I show you in its color on the back, I'm going, imagine it as black and white. Yeah. You don't, yeah. you can't imagine do that. Imagine a silky, continuous tone, yeah. Hey, you yeah. don't have that, that's not the way you see things. Right. Photographers, we can go, oh yeah, I know what that would look like, but your customer doesn't, and they yeah. shouldn't have to, but if I can show them the black and white image, or that higher contrast, or whatever it is type of look, then I can show them that on camera. And then, but if, if you, they like that, yeah. I can deliver that to the client, and I'm done. You deliver, would you deliver that JPEG, Absolutely. or would you go in and post-process the raw Dep file? If, if to the look JPEG like that? is what they want, if it's if it's good, yeah. if it's solid, if the client likes it, I'm delivering that. Why should I go recreate it? Interesting. Now, if okay. I need to, maybe I didn't get it right, or maybe the client changed their mind, yeah. or the client says, you know what, can we make it a little bit more contrast, more of that, more of that? Yeah. If I'm going to change anything, I'm going back to the raw. Yeah. I'm not going to try and adjust would the it, JPEG. Wouldn't it be cool if the camera actually saved the XMP sidecar files? for the black and white conversion so that when you load it in the Lightroom, it would load in those conversions to the RAW and you could tweak it? There, there's, <laughs> there is, I've seen some of that. You know me, I'm, I'm not a Lightroom user. I've just started playing with Lightroom, yeah, so I'm getting yeah. you know my head around well, it. Well, Aperture uses XMP too, right? Well, yeah, but for the color profile things, I've seen some stuff in Lightroom, but I don't even know what cameras that works with. And I yeah. have seen some replace the Canon look kind of a thing, but I think those are fixed presets. I don't yeah, think they're, they're fixed. customized yeah, they don't, ones they don't yet. Come out. Yeah, you're right. No, that'd be yeah. pretty cool. That would be cool. It would be cool. Then cool. you'd have your starting point and adjust from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If this is not quite right, you just want to bring out the shadows a little, a little bit. bit more, you yeah. Just go to the raw file and you're already at that point and then you just tweak it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't know if you I don't know if you really could do that technically. There's a just very it'd be like saying take your processed image and aperture and open it in Lightroom. It's like all the tools are different. Right. So me, me I mean <laughs> Total Who rat knows? hole, but I'm thinking, you know, the Adobe DNG digital negative format right. might be able to handle that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, who knows? I don't know. Anyway. Out of my I... area of expertise. <laughs> but whatever. I just make pretty pictures. Yeah. <laughs> a preview. So, okay, so now, so that's a, a either or. This could yep. be either way. So now let's go into where constant light was a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. now, I could have shot this with strobe, but I chose to shoot it with constant light, and there's a very good reason for it. So obviously, we got a portrait of a chef. Yep. It's in his kitchen. The overhead light is God knows what. Tungsten, daylight, horrible, nasty, balanced yeah, light. Just bad. All, just kinds bad. Of, all kinds of bad. All kinds of bad. Yeah. So white balance the camera to the scene, so now he looks great, and I'm looking at the camera, looking at the LCD, I see he looks great, we're all solid and good. But now this under here is too dark. Yeah. So I've got just shadow here, and there's not enough light to put a, a bounce card under and actually fill it in at all. So I need to add some light underneath. Mm -hmm. So I could get a strobe, mm -hmm. but if I've got a strobe, now I've got to figure out the right gel combination to match that overhead light with what's underneath. Yep. So this is where this guy comes in. So here's, what, this, what are we looking at here? So this is a Felix LED light. Okay. Or the Felix LED light allows me to do something incredibly cool, and that is adjust the color temperature by simply spinning a dial on here. Look at that. So I can go from 3,000 degrees to 5,600 degrees, yeah. and I can dial in the temperature. So what I'm doing here is I put the light underneath him, I get the brightness to where I need it. Okay, yep. that's, that's the right brightness. That's how much light I want. Yep. And then I just dial in the color temperature, and I'm looking at the LCD, and I'm going, okay, okay, there. Now it matches the overhead light. So now the underlight matches the overlight. So you're, you're, you're building the color in the scene, looking at the LCD, not looking at the scene with your naked eyes. Exactly. Looking through the camera. Yeah, I don't care what it really looks like. I care what it looks like through here. Okay. So I'm looking at and the is, LCD. Is the, is the, you, this is GH4, right? Right. So is the GH4 giving you, when you do the preview, are you getting an accurate preview on the LCD as to sure. what the image is going to look like? So sure. Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's not going to be... It's hundred percent, yeah. but it's yeah. It's close. It's very close. It's very close. Okay. It's okay. it's close enough for me to do the color calibration, the color adjustment that I need in camera. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm probably going to do a little color tweaking in Photoshop or Lightroom or Aperture or whatever later. <laughs> but um, but I can balance it. I can see in here enough to balance it and make sure that the two match. Love it. Love that's it. really really cool. So that's that's a case where using the LED was way easier than it would have been to use a strobe. Yeah, yeah. Well, so make, I, and again, right tool for the right job. Exactly, right, right tool for the right job. So yeah. could I have shot this with a strobe? Yes, but I would have had to figure out the gels. So this made it a heck of a lot easier. But you know, Joseph, a lot of photographers are very, they're very binary, right? Either I shoot with strobe or I don't, or oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot with strobe and I'm not going to shoot with these so every right. you know every when you have a hammer everything looks like a nail right? <laughs> right so they don't have a toolbox so how do you what do you say to those photographers so they in the, Grow. In part of the <laughs> argument is I want to get really good at one set sure. of tools and figure that out should they or well you, you need to get good at your tools right yeah, you course. need to know your tools yeah. um, but you don't do that on the job yeah right? right that's why you play around when you're not 
on assignment mm -hmm. and you figure it out. So that when you walk into the situation, when I walked into this room, I had strobes and I had these yeah. and I actually had pro photos with me as well because this was part of a much bigger shoot. Yep. This was just one shot that we needed. Yep. So I've got all the tools and I assess the scene and say, you know what's going to make this work best is putting an LED under here so I can balance the light. And that's part of being a pro. Assessing a situation, and you're like you're, you're prepared, right? So you're not you're not a surgeon going into surgery learning how to do the <laughs> do the job. Hopefully, right. you know what you're doing before you go in. Right, right. right. Cool. That'd be bad. So yeah. yeah, so that's that one. So okay, so now let's go to one where LEDs were required. I couldn't have done this shot with constant light. So it just looks like a standard portrait, mm -hmm. and it is. But here's here's the thing. So we all know that the micro four thirds sensor is a smaller sensor mm -hmm. than your full frame or your medium format, yeah. right? One of the advantages of a larger sensor is you get a shallower depth of field at any given aperture. Yep. Okay. So if you're shooting medium format, big, huge sensor, and you're in the studio, and you're, you've got your pro photos on, and your lighting formula comes out to you know, 1 60th of a second at f8. Mm -hmm. Well, on medium format at f8, you still get shallow depth of field. You still get bokeh. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. f8 on a full frame DSLR, yeah, probably not. Right. You know, they, if you got three people in the audience, they're not uh, in the stage. They're not all going to be in focus. Yep. But you're not going to get really shallow depth of field. Yep. You go to micro four thirds, and that becomes even harder. Right at f8, a lot is in focus. Mm -hmm. So if I want that bokeh, if I want that shallow depth of field, on a micro four thirds, I really got to be shooting wide open at like f2. Okay. Right. That's that's where I'm going to get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's fine. Right. There's plenty of lenses that do that. This is an f2.8 on here. Yep. You know, I can shoot reasonably shallow depth of field with that. Yep. You get something like the Noctocron f1.2, 85 millimeter f1.2. Yeah. Huh. That's what this is shot with. Yeah. Um, you know, your shell, your depth of field lens. is razor thin. Yeah. And that's if that's the look you want, then that's what you use. Yep. Well, here's the thing. In the studio, a pro photo, I, if I turn that light all the way down, and I put an octobox on it, mm -hmm. and then I put three baffles of of diffusion in between, mm -hmm. I still have way too much light too to much shoot light. it up 1.2. Yeah. Yeah, so, you have the neutral density filters on there to knock it down even further if you want to. Right, I mean, you could, but then you got to deal with looking through the yeah, darker image. Yeah, you know, the image, there's more light, yeah. Right, yeah. no bueno. All right, yeah. so I don't want to do that. But I can't do that super shallow depth of the field with big studio lights. Mm -hmm. So now I could do small strobes, but same problem, just you know, lower. I, maybe I could get a small strobe that goes low power enough. Mm -hmm. But what's easier is to go with constant lighting. Take your Felix LEDs, go and turn the light to whatever setting you need it in, get that light brightness on there, get it looking right, and now I've got enough light to shoot at f1.2 or 1.4 or whatever this is shot at, yeah. and I'm still shooting at a reasonable ISO, let's say 200 to 400, I don't have to crank the ISO way up, I'm yep. shooting at a nice ISO, and I got that shallowed up the field. So if we zoom into this shot, you can see there's you know super perfectly crisp on his eyelashes, yeah. super soft on the ear there. Really, I mean, wow. tip of his nose is soft, eyes sharp, ears out. And this is at 42.5 Noctocron? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so this shot I could not do with the big strobes because it's literally it's too, too much, much light. light. Yeah. So yeah. there's a great reason to do, uh, to do constant light there. Interesting. Okay. So I got one more example for yeah. you of constant light. So this is a pregnancy shoot. Mm -hmm. And this is the shot the client wanted. And by the way, take, thank you for telling me that this was a pregnancy <laughs> shoot. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was. Just, it's for the listeners <laughs> no, who like might a, not be watching. It's a post-lunch shot, right? Post, yes, this is a post-lunch <laughs> shot. Um, the client, this is exactly what the client wanted. Yeah. She had a, a sample that she showed me, some other photo, black background, you know, the curve like this, the front lighting. Yeah. So we, we set that up, and it's exactly what she wanted. And, you know, it was nice, but I, I, it needed something else. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out what else to do to keep the shot she wants, but to make it better, make yeah. it more interesting. And I don't know if you remember, I did this shot uh, in the studio a year and change ago. The ballerina covered in baby powder. Yeah. She's jumping in the air, and the powder is just poof, popping off yeah. of her, right? Yeah. That baby powder, I gotta tell you, if you're ever going to do this, rent somebody else's studio. <laughs> you're still finding I'm baby still powder? still finding baby powder. It's just nasty. It's good but that you it, need to use glitter, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, right, the glitter bomb. Yeah. Uh, so, so I still have this baby powder, and apparently I have a short-term memory problem because I decided to do it again. Mm -hmm. not, as, not as much. Uh, did a couple of tests, did a little baby powder in the hands, just kind of clap it in front of her, get this nice cloud, you yeah. know, fire a test shot. Oh, this looks beautiful. Okay, so now, now I know what I want to do, but i got to get powder on both sides of her. Well, here's, here's the problem, first problem right here. We've got the model, her husband, and me. Yeah. We're the only ones there. Okay. We need two people to clap hands to clap powder. Somebody's got to push the button to take the picture. Right. So how's that going to work? Yeah. So this is number one where this isn't the lighting part, but number one where the Lumix came in handy. So the GH4 has got built-in Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Connect that to my iPhone. Yep. From there, not only can I preview the shot, I can push the button to take the picture. Yeah. So I put this on the motor drive. Shoots 12 frames a second. Mm -hmm. Tether it to the iPhone. Hand it to the model. You can see her arms aren't in the shot. So her arms are up here to begin with. Give her the iPhone. 
<laughs> That's awesome. This her is dude the and I. Of that shot, right? right technically, there. she pushed the button, right? right? So she technically owns the copyright to this. Then. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, her partner and I are on either sides of her hands with the with the powder. Yeah. You know, one, two, three, clap, get hands out of the way. She pushes the button and fires off twelve frames a second to get the shot. Choreography. Now, yeah. could you do this with four K video? Absolutely. Then you'd have thirty frames per second instead of twelve frames per second. Yeah. Eight megapixel instead of sixteen megapixel. I wanted to have. I didn't need eight frame, uh, 30 frames per second to get this. Yeah. 12 was plenty. I wanted to have a higher resolution, so I choose to shoot stills. But it's one flip of the dial to switch over to video mode, and I do the exact same thing at in 30 video. frames a second, eight megapixels. And then pixel. later you would go in and find the frame. Find the frame, it, right. Boom. So that's, so that's exactly what we did, though, at 12 frames a second. Yep. So the first shot, you can see here, his hand's still in the shot. Yep. Right, so one, two, three, go. His hand's still in there. There's the powder. But now we're at 12 frames a second. There's shot number two. Awesome. Shot yep. number three, awesome. But already by shot four, the powder is declining. It's too little, too little. No bueno anymore, right? That, that's not enough. Yep. So the shot that we end up using is shot number two. I was able to, number one, fire it that way because we've got the model triggering it. Yep. Firing 12 frames a second. But now we get back to the LED discussion. Pro photos aren't going to recycle 12 frames a second. Right. 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 So LED to the rescue there. I don't have to worry about constant, refresh. I don't have to worry about the on. light. It's yep. always on. It just shoots, and we get the shot. Wow. Brilliant. So where just a different tool. Just a quick question. Where was the final destination for this? Did they make a big print from this? Or what? Uh, yeah. That's, this, this is very recent, so we haven't printed it out yet. But, yeah, she's going to do a print of this. That will be for their, for their wall. Really yeah. nice. Thank really you. Nice. And then with the, with the GH4. I'll shot on the GH4. Wow. And I, I think that was probably with the 2470 zoom, I think. I don't know. I'd have to look at the XF, but, yep. Wow. Yeah, nice, nice stuff. So different lighting for different job. It just depends on what you're doing. You got to use the right tool for the task. Yeah. There's absolutely a place for big studio lights, small strobes, constant lights. It all fits into the workflow. So then the, the big question then becomes someone saying, you know, I'm watching this. This is awesome. I want to do that. I'm going to get some continuous lights. What should I start with? You sure. know, so should I go with the Felix? Should I just go to Home Depot and get some lights? You know, you know the, well, that, that's the thing about Constance. You, you certainly can go to Home Depot and buy some lights. Mm -hmm. And if you're starting, by all means, that's what you should do because yeah. that's going to be the cheapest. You get some daylight balance bulbs. Um, you know, they don't have to be LEDs, just some daylight balance CFLs or whatever you can buy. Yeah. A couple of those cheap, uh, remember the shop lamps, you know, the yeah. metal frames? Yeah, the metal frames with the clamp With on. the clamp, yeah. right? That's, you know what? It's light. Yeah. It's light and, and it works. like 12 bucks. Yeah. Exactly. Super cheap. So you can get those, you can do some DIY some modifiers, and mm -hmm. you can have a nice lighting setup. Yeah. As you get into custom built LEDs, then you start to add on to the cost, yeah. but you're adding on to the quality, and you're adding into things like color temperature control. Right, which is now, brilliant. Which yeah. is great. So the Felix, this would be kind of like the Pro Photos. This is definitely your really high-end so light. So this is around the top of the line. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're paying a premium for the Felix lights, but there's some things about them that are very different from other, Felix, uh, other LED lights that you see. You walk around the show floor, and you'll see lights like this one here is, as far as you can tell, it's a single light source. Yeah. You'll see these things that are panels with a hundred little LEDs on them, yeah. right? Those are fine if you can diffuse them enough so that you don't get the little, it's all magnetized. It's, this it's whole magnetic. thing is so awesome. It's, so it's nice. great. Yeah. Uh, so that you can diffuse those enough so you don't see the little spots. Because if you're shooting anything reflective, suddenly you've got a grid showing up on the reflection. Right. That's not good. You, right. you, know, you don't want that. So these single point light sources are definitely better for that than those panels are. They you all can, have their place. You can a modifier on this, like a softbox too. You know you what, want. this is designed, this is the same size as a Profoto head. These okay. are designed to take Profoto modifiers. Okay. Yeah. So if you put a softbox on this, how many stops are you losing? Oh well, I mean you're always going to lose maybe a stop, stop and a half, okay. depending on the softbox. Um, but again, you're not getting a massive quantity of light out of here like you are for the Profotos. Sure, sure. So you know, I have a six by, six by four foot softbox that I will pump a pro photo into. Yeah. If I plug one of these into there, I mean, there's, there's nothing it's coming not out of it. It's not enough, yeah. right? Yeah, it's so, in yeah. yeah, I'm basically, with these um, small soft boxes or diffusion panel or bouncing it off of things, that's, or you know, this little thing, if you send a little diffuser on there, yeah. they come with um, barn doors, which yep. are really handy for just controlling where the light goes. Yeah. That can be really cool. But yeah, you're, you're definitely paying a premium to get in here, but you're getting that quality. And the other thing about LEDs, really high quality LEDs versus cheaper LEDs, Apparently, and I don't totally get the science of this, but um, as it's been explained to me, LED color light spectrum, there's a magenta missing. 
from most LED lights. Okay. And it's not until you get into the really high-end lights that that's there. Yeah. And so what happens is you end up with a green, what they call it a green spike in your photos. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you're not going to see on the LCD. You won't see it until you're in post, and it's what, too late. How, how does it show up? It's a green cast. Just the like green overall, cast, green overall cast green that you okay. apparently is very hard to get rid of. Ugh. Very hard to color correct for. Ugh. So that's no good. The other thing is the refresh, if you're shooting video, cheaper LED lights, you can get a, a flicker, a refresh. Remember if you took a picture or took video of an old CRT television, yeah. Yeah. right, and that roll, the right. roll, right? The same thing will happen with cheap LED lights, yeah. and you may not be able to see that on the LCD, and you won't see it until you get onto a big screen. Yeah. And if that happens, then you're, I mean, you're done. There yeah. is no correction shoot, for that. You, you got to shoot, you, you shoot again. Yeah. So quality lights there are going to make that difference. So do you have to have these? No. Yeah. Like pro photos, you don't have to have pro photos. Right. There are advantages. They are better. They are worth the money, but mm -hmm. they are a lot of money. And they're more rugged, and they're, they're going to last. Yeah, right? they're going to last. You my, the money for something like this is going to last you. Right. And my pro photos are you know, probably almost a decade old, yeah. and they work like the day I bought them. Yeah. Right. You want to get rid of those? Because I'm looking for some. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to go buy me some airs, <laughs> no. we'll trade. No. no, no. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Cool. This has been great, Joseph. Any any parting shots you want to leave with the audience? No, I don't think so. It's just, you know, it's, it's again, all about the light. Like you said in the beginning, photography is about light. Yeah. And whether it's available light or I remember you used to say, I got available. I got a flash in my pocket. It's available. Yep. Right? Exactly. Right? That's the thing. That's available the thing. light is what you have available to you. Yeah. And make your own light. I love making my own light. Yeah. Uh, it's that's, that's it's the fun, fun of this craft, right? It's, it is. I it's, really enjoy I mean, it. The, the, the tools are awesome that we have. The, this is awesome. You know, everything, the, the software, everything's great. Yep. But when it comes down to it, it's all about the light. It is. You know, and getting excited about the light and doing stuff with light and understanding, like what you're saying, like you're in the DNA of light. You right. know, you know about the, the, the physical properties of these things. You know, when you get that deep, then you start seeing how things work and how yeah. they should work and where the holes are, like the green spike. Right. right? Cool. Yep. So what's next for you? What's next for you? I mean, what's next for the site? What's going on? Um, well, the, so the site's, you know, that's just relaunched, so that's got a whole and you just got off a path. tour. Were you on a right? The Lumix Shoot Anything tour. Yeah, we just got back from that. It was yep. with Julio Shorio, another yep. luminary. We went up the West Coast, doing showing uh, all the Lumix gear on uh, a series of retail stores, and just doing that tour. We did a big social media campaign around it. That was a lot of fun. We're going to do it again in the summer on the East Coast. We haven't set dates or anything yet, but very cool. Probably Chicago, Boston, Jersey, New York, that yeah. area. We're going to yeah. do something there. So that'll Chicago be fun. Chicago is not East Coast. It's, like it's close enough. Yeah, they don't claim the East Coast. So. All right. How about <laughs> the Atlantic Northeast, do you They're call it that? they Midwestern. Like we we'll call it Midwestern. Yeah, oh, whatever. <laughs> right, well, then we won't go to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Chicago and send your email to Joseph. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, so we're going to do that. Congratulations yeah. on all the stuff you're doing. Awesome shots. Thank you. You know, every time I talk to you, I learn stuff. You're the reason that I shoot mirrorless today. There you, you go. Because you convinced me you were shooting, what were you shooting way back in the day? Uh, well, when switched. I got into mirrorless, I started with the Olympus. Yeah. Right? And yeah. It, great cameras, great system. Mm -hmm. um, I found that more of the lenses I was buying were the Panasonic lenses, yeah. and they're all interchangeable, which is awesome. Yeah. And then got introduced to the Panas Panasonic cameras, the yeah. Lumix cameras, and just fell in love with the system. Yeah. And so yeah. now... You know, my bag is 99%. It's Lumix so gear. I do still have a couple of Olympus lenses, but they really don't come out that often anymore. And it's not, I mean, it's great gear. Yeah. It's all great gear. Yeah. It's all interchangeable. And, That's yeah, part of the fun. it's all got the Micro Four Thirds mount, so you're yep. golden. Yeah. It's part of the fun. Dude, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir. We're going to hang out later. Absolutely. We're in Vegas. Vegas, baby. Let's do it. Vegas. All right, guys, all right. that's it for this session in the Lumix Lounge. We're here at WPPI 2015. Joseph Nasky. I'm Frederick Van Johnson. We'll see you in the next video.